What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to another episode of Tone Quest. In today's episode, we'll be dialing in the classic tone from the track House of Broken Love by the fantastic band Great White. So let's dive in and dial it in. Now before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out to Roger Fisher for making a contribution towards the channel via donation to my PayPal. So thanks a ton for that. And in case you're enjoying the presets and the videos and you want to support the channel too, check the description box for more details as to how you can support me. All right, let's get started. First, as always, is the background. Now, there isn't too much information that I could find on the internet around the gear that was used by Mark Kendall, but I found this one article which outlines what gear he might have used. My initial guesses were inclining towards a martial of some sorts because those were pretty popular during that era of music. And indeed, the article does outline that Mark used the Marshall JCM 900 and the Marshall JCM 2000 amps for his tone amongst other pedals. And as far as the cap goes, the article also explains that Mark used the 4x12 1960 Marshall cabinets in his tone stack. So that's pretty simple and self-explanatory, but obviously there are a few unknowns, like I also hear a fair amount of compression probably added to increase the sustain and boost the guitars as you know the pickups around that era probably weren't that hot also i hear a good amount of modulation chorus to be specific considerable amount of delay and reverb to give it that typical style of smooth singing guitar lead sound now we do not have the exact jcm 900 amp model in the axe fx2 but we do have something really close to it so what did i use let's jump in right away and find out all right guys, so I've got Axe edit in front of me as always and I've got a blank preset in there so that you guys can hear the DI levels of my guitar and adjust yours accordingly if needed. I am playing my Uniball Music Man JP15. I'm playing the regular Slinky Strings by Uniball over here. I'm on the bridge pickup. Everything's on full. This is how it sounds. Doesn't sound very exciting, but let's make it exciting. Let's start adding things block by block. So the first block we're gonna add is always the amp. Now for the amp, as I mentioned, Mark probably used a JCM 900 or the JCM 2000 Marshall amps for this particular track, but both of them are not available in the Axe FX2, but we have something which is very, very close to the JCM 900, which is the preamp version modeled in the Axe FX2. It was called the JM Pre-1. Now it was modeled, I think twice, if I'm correct, uh, first, for model was called the Brit Pre and then it was modeled again and then it was called the JM Pre 1 models in there to be honest. So we're going to use that. You're going to go over here and we're going to select JM Pre 1 OD2. Now there are a couple of bass shift options also available to you but I don't like the tone of them too much. I think that was an option in the preamp actually. So we're going to use the JM Pre 1 OD2 channel here and I'm gonna keep everything at stock. Let's go ahead and add the cab as well. For the cab, as I mentioned, it's gonna be a probably a 4x12 Marshall 1960 sort of a cabinet. So we're gonna choose that. We have a couple of them available. I went ahead with F038 1960A with G12 M speakers. I think this sounds closest to my ears and I think it's a really good cab to work around with. So now before I go ahead and tweak anything in, in any of these blocks over here, let's hear how the preset is sounding at everything stock. So this is how it sounds. Now, right off the bat, I think that sounds pretty good for a crunch sort of a tone, but that's not the kind of tone we are after. We're looking for a more, uh, you know, chunky sort of a lead, fat sort of a tone. So we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna tweak the amp and the cab to make it sound like that. Let's start tweaking section by section, block by block. So first thing we're gonna tweak is the amp. Now this amp has a lot of input drive, so you could go all the way up to 10, but I chose around six, and I'll explain why in a minute but hang on to that one. Let's keep it at six. Bass, I'm gonna keep it at five. Mids, now mid is quite tricky. 
too low mids in this particular case will make your tone really really thin but in my opinion and to my ears the way i hear it after four or five probably the mids doesn't really do too much to the tone and it just adds in more gain and i'm going to demonstrate uh, you know how that sounds so let's push the input drive up to 10 for example for this particular instance and i'm going to play a chord and i'm going to push the mid from zero to maximum and you can probably hear as to how it tweaks so mids at zero input drive at 10 this is how it sounds So as you could hear that the mids were really, really thin. The tone was really, really thin in the beginning and then it got fatter and then it remained there and I think it added more gain. So I'm gonna keep the input drive at around six back again. And for the mids, I chose around six. Uh, this gives a fair amount of fatness and fair amount of gain to the amp in my opinion. Uh, treble 5.5 is what I chose. Presence, I'm not gonna touch. And as you can probably see, I'm not going after a very bright sort of a top and heavy sort of a tone. Now, when it comes to the master volume, you might say that the JM Pre 1 was actually a preamp. So how come this has a master volume? I checked with my good friend Leon and he did mention that this was actually, uh, this model is actually combined with the power section of the Brit preamp. And that's the reason you have a master volume control over here. I think it was Brit Pre or Brit 800, correct me in the comments guys. But you know, that's the reason you have a master volume in this particular uh, amp in the AxeFX2. Uh, JM Pre 1 is actually a preamp, so it doesn't have a master volume. But in this case, if you push up the master volume too much, let's say around 10, you are obviously gonna have more gain, but I think the tone gets too fuzzy in my taste, to my taste, and I think I like it around six, which is kind of a sweet spot for me in terms of this amp. All right, moving on. So let's go ahead and modify the cab as well. Uh, low cut, I always like to push it up to 80 Hertz or 100 based on your gear. Uh, high cut, 8800. Uh, not too much brightness in the tone, as I mentioned. I always like to go into the room and add in some air for that 80 sort of a fizz sort of a sound. It gives the real sound of the amp coming through your speakers. So I think it's a good way to tweak it to add some fuzz and fizz into your actual tone. Use headphones and I cannot recommend that enough every time. So 5600 Hertz is where I set the air frequency to. And with that done, this is how you're sounding. But before I go ahead and play anything, I think I need to push the level up because I have to compensate for the master volume, you know, being at six. So let's push it up to minus six and this is how it sounds. <laughs> In my opinion, that sounds really good in terms of tone and I wouldn't probably tweak anything else over here, but I think it's lacking a bit of sustain. So what I can do, there are a couple of options you have over here. You can actually push the input drive up or you can add a drive pedal in the beginning of your signal chain, like a tube schema or something. Or what I like to do sometimes is use a compressor as a clean boost to push the amp a little bit further. And I think I do hear a lot of compression on the actual track as well. So probably this was something that was used and I could be wrong as well, but you know, to my ears, I think using a compressor really helps to push the amp and you know, it acts as a clean boost and it doesn't you know color your tone too much, to be honest. So I'm gonna use a pedal comp and push the compression down. Don't want five attack one milliseconds we want the compressor to kick in as quickly as possible quick release 15 milliseconds filter and emphasis i didn't touch now the level control is where i think the magic really happens you can push this up to actually push the amp and make it have make it you know give you more gain and sustain for me i think 7.5 which is quite a lot to be honest it give me it gives me that kind of sustain and the gain that i want from the amp so listen to this part now <laughs> That's a fair amount of sustain. Now that sounds really, really good. I think that's the kind of sustain and tone we want, but obviously with so much gain and so much compression, obviously comes in a bit of noise and string noise. To avoid that and to curb some of that down, I'm gonna add a gate over here between the amp and the cab. Now this will help to tame some of that noise. So minus 45 on the threshold. Ratio, I'm gonna leave it at two. Again, attack one millisecond. You know probably why by now. Hold, I don't want any hold and release. It's gonna be 15 milliseconds. 
and that's going to help you tame some of that noise as well next i'm going to add the chorus which is going to be a digital stereo now uh, from what I remember, I think Mark Kendall uses a Digitech uh, stereo chorus pedal and I chose digital stereo, not because why digital sounds Digitech <laughs> kind of in a way, but yeah, I use the digital stereo. Uh, sounds good to my ears, bring the rate, rate down to as low as I can. Uh, don't want those kind of, you know, sine curves happening too much in my uh, playing. Mix 25%. Decent amount of chorus to be honest and in the tone section I went ahead and brought the high cut down to 9k as I don't want it to be too bright and dimension mode I want to turn it to high this does really change your tone quite a bit if you use different dimension modes so play around there. Uh, next up before I play I think I'm going to add the delay and the chorus as well. So let's, so let's go ahead and add the delay where are you delay. Uh, delay again digital stereo was my choice uh, tempo I set it to 1 8 the tempo is 78 BPM around there feedback I didn't touch 20% gives you kind of one repeat I think mix I pushed it up to 25% fair amount of uh, mix coming up there EQ I always like to do this trick to bring down the high cut of the EQ so that the you know the, the repeats of the delay don't interfere with your actual playing too much it's a very handy trick. I use it pretty much in every preset of mine. Next, let's add the reverb and I'm going to add this in parallel. Feel free to add it in series as well. It's up to you if you want the delay repeats to go into the reverb. Uh, I like it in parallel, so I'm going to put it over here, connect the dots. And for the reverb, what I'm going to choose is London Plate. It's a really good reverb that I find works really well for that 80 sort of sound. Uh, I think the change the pre-delay to around 55 milliseconds and quality I brought it up to high which is something that I always do. Mix in this case is going to go all the way up to 100% because we are in parallel. Level is something that you can suit as per your taste. I think minus 8.6 dB kind of did the trick for me and I think that's pretty much it. That's how the preset is. Let's see how it is sounding at the moment. So let's play that part. <laughs> I think that sounds really really good and delicious to my ears and I think that's fat and it's got the right amount of uh, delay reverb and that modulation perhaps uh, you might say a little bit of too much modulation you can always tame down the chorus mix in the actual preset but I think it suits well with the backing track uh, by the way if you want to jam along with this backing track the backing track that I created is available on the channel so go ahead and check it out and you know feel free to post some covers as well I would be you know more than happy to see how the preset sounds on your gear as well all right before we go ahead into scene two I want to quickly mention that if you're enjoying the presets and the video on this channel a sub to the channel would be legendary so make sure you go ahead and subscribe and so that you guys can get notified of future such presets in your inbox directly all right next thing for scene two what I did for the part that comes after where I finished playing in the previous section is that I added more mix on the delay so I you know change the delay to Y mode and you know let's just go ahead and save this for a second and for scene 2 what I did is I changed the uh, you know I'm going to copy over the delays X mode into the Y mode which should be pretty much done but let's copy it over copy X to Y and what I did in the Y mode is just push the mix up quite a bit around 30% so this gives us more delay and I do hear more delay happening and I think I pushed up the feedback a little bit as well to around 25% gives a little bit of more repeat coming through so with that done this is how that part sounds <laughs> That sounds really really good well that's it that's the preset you know where to find the preset and how to download it but before you go ahead and grab it please do spend a couple of seconds to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below as to what you think about the tone 
and what would you do differently if you were dialing in this tone yourself. As always, thank you for your support and I shall see you guys in the next video. And until then, stay safe everyone. Keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.